it was you with a teenage or a grown son, 21, 21 year, or 20 year old. You had breakfast with him in the morning. You told him about the kind of things that you expect and wish for for this nation. You reminded him that the constitution protects him, that he can go and protest, he can go and present petitions to public authorities. Mr. Speaker, you even told him that we've got a reasonable government and we've got a reasonable security force that will ensure that you are protected. And then, Mr. Speaker, you get a call that your son is lying at City Mochery. Your son is lying in a morgue somewhere in Eldoret. Your son is lying in a morgue in Nakuru. That is a reality we are dealing with, Mr. Speaker. We cannot run away from our constitutional mandate. When we have our people lying in morgues, others lying in hospitals, others lying in detention centers, Mr. Speaker, the very least we should do is to call the CS for Interior this afternoon to come to this house to tell us the number of people who were killed yesterday while exercising their constitutional rights. Number two, the CS must tell us the number of people being held in communicado by the police and other paramilitary forces in this republic. Mr. Speaker, we need to know how many people are in hospitals with, with gunshot wounds. We cannot go on recess until those questions are answered. Mr. Speaker, we need to be calling some governors, like the governor of Nairobi, to tell us what happened in Nairobi where City Hall was set aflame. Mr. Speaker, I know people are saying that when I call him to the Public Accounts Committee, he will tell me all the records were burnt by Gen Z. When you go to ask him for his academic certificate, he will tell you that it was burnt by Gen Z. We need to put a stop to these dances, Mr. Speaker. We cannot go on recess until these issues are resolved. Mr. Speaker, we, may, we must put a stop to the arrogance that we are seeing in the ruling class of this country. We must put a stop and make sure that people live within their means and people who have consumed public resources do not come and vomit on our shoes and on our feet. And Mr. Speaker, we know them. Some of them are in this house. Some of them are in the executive. We cannot go and recess until we have held them to account and delivered them to Gen Z for punishment or for necessary action. Of course, action within the Constitution. Mr. Speaker, why do we want to run away from our duty when Parliament sits even when a country is at war? Is it because we don't have lunch? If we don't have lunch, Senator Hamida has always provided meals for us. Is it because we have got broken windows? Mr. Speaker, we cannot lament about broken windows when we have broken limbs and people out there. And we should also stop this blame of Gen Z's. Mr. Speaker, look at our curriculum. What have these children or these uh, adults, new adults, been fed on in the school curriculum? These are the products of the free primary education of Mwai Kibaki and Raila Odinga. Their curriculum, when it comes to Fasihi and literature, Mr. Speaker, reads as follows. They read the animal farm, and it is about injustice. They read Kidaga Kimemwazea. They read Tumbo Nisiloshiba. Kifo Kisimani, Mstahiki Mayor, Mashetani, and Parliament of Olds. Mr. Speaker, that is the recent set book in literature, Parliament of Olds. And then you blame Gen Z's for coming to this parliament? A parliament of Olds, a parliament of sellouts, a parliament of tankouts, a parliament that is completely insensitive to them? We are the ones who have fed them this kind of literature, and we are reaping what we sowed at this moment. Mr. Speaker, we cannot go on recess until the president apologizes to the youth of this country. Since when did the hustlers become mutineers? Since when did our hustlers and children become wankers? Mr. Speaker, since when did our Gen Z's, our children, become saboteurs? Since when did they connive to commit treason? Mr. Speaker, the youth and the public and the nation deserve an apology. Not the intransigent posture that we saw from President Ruto yesterday. And leadership, Mr. Speaker, sometimes we need to go back to the Bible. Look at the book of Exodus and how God hardened the heart of Pharaoh. Not once, not twice, not thrice, but almost five times. But eventually God was trying to teach Pharaoh a lesson. Pharaoh William Ruto, God is teaching you a lesson. You have hardened your heart. Your children are in mobs. They are in hospitals. You are calling them criminals. You are calling them saboteurs. Mr. Speaker, even in the hardest of circumstances, God will rescue his people. 
and God will rescue his children. God will rescue this nation from the clutches of people who do not care about those who put them in office. They care about state dinners in foreign lands. They do not care about the welfare of the people that they're supposed to represent. We cannot go and recess until we call the president because the constitution empowers us to call any person, and that includes the president, to come here as a chair of the National Security Committee and to tell us the actions that they are taking to ensure that the, the, the cost of living is managed, but also the flagrant abuse of human rights and constitutional rights is also stemmed. Mr. Speaker, we cannot go on recess until the legal committee carries out an inquiry on the circumstances that led to the mess of yesterday. Until the trade committee talks to small-scale traders in Tomboya and Ronaldingala and find out the extent of losses yesterday. Until the finance committee makes a strong case for Senate to consider the finance bill because it has provisions that relate to county government. Until this House takes a resolution on the basis of Senator Tata's letter that Parliament means Senate and the National Assembly and the Senate must be involved in provision of budgets for constitutional officers and independent officers as per Article 249 of the Constitution. Mr. Speaker, if we went on recess until that date in July, all these things are going to happen, all these things are going to pass, and by the time we come back, it will be water under the bridge. We cannot go on recess until the Cohesion Committee calls all relevant stakeholders to have a conversation on the intergenerational conflict and the intergenerational divide that we are seeing uh, emerging. Mr. Speaker, we cannot go on recess until the staff of Parliament, their security, their safety and well-being is guaranteed and assured. If anyone bore the brunt of yesterday's uh, disruption, it was our staff. Our officers were not touched, Mr. Speaker. We were safe in Bunga Towers. But many of these clerks sitting here, their windows are broken, they were shaken, the uniforms of sergeant at arms were taken away. Mr. Speaker, we cannot go on recess until we are told that the Commission spent $3.2 on an advanced security solution. It was tested yesterday. Does it work? We are not going on recess, Mr. Speaker, until we get answers to these questions. Mr. Speaker, we are not going on recess until our friends and brothers and sisters on the other political divide approach their political leader to tell him as Pharaoh was also cancelled by his counselors, but God has de designed that his heart should remain hardened. Please, our colleagues, Senator Chiradge, Senator Lelegwe, you've got the ear and access to the president. What benefit do you get by leading a dead nation, by leading an injured nation, by leading a sick nation, by leading, leading an unhappy nation? Whose happiness is more important? Is it Joe Biden? Or is it the people of Kenya? Yes. President Ruto, we expect you to climb down and we expect you to respond to the concerns of Kenyans. We expect you to talk to your children. We expect you to provide leadership. If that does not happen, Mr. Speaker, the Gen Zs have shown us yesterday what they are capable of doing. Revolutions start like that. If you look and if you read a tale of two cities, which is Charles Dickens' account of the French Revolution. Revolution start like it did yesterday. Do we want a revolution in Kenya? Perhaps we need a revolution. But Mr. Speaker, I conclude by crying out to my party leader, Raila Molodinga, Baba, we need you. Baba, how I wish you didn't have to go to Addis Ababa. Baba, how I wish you are here to provide leadership, to provide counsel, to provide statesmanship, to provide direction for a country that is in dire need of leadership, for direction and of statesmanship. What we don't have in this country is statesmanship. We have politicians. We have people who have come across cash. They do not know how to conduct themselves in the presence of cash. Like someone who has been hungry for too long and finds a huge uh, a banquet on the table. They are now just showing us what they call Madarao in Swahili. Mr. Speaker, we hope that this nation will, will not degenerate. Because when it goes down, it does not matter whether you are a senator or a member of National Assembly or a member of UDA or Azimio. We all go down. Baba, we need you. Now, Senator Kajuang, 
Uh, I've given you 11 minutes. You've spoken for 11 minutes, courtesy of the request.